right guys, well welcome back for another quick little channel CG video. Today, I'm going to be doing something that I've been promising to do and finish up for quite a long time now, and that is wire up the oil pressure gauge that I installed on the PTGT a while back. I'll link that video up in the corner now. Basically, some of you might have noticed this in previous videos, but I have gauges. I mounted them right here in the center of the dash, and I have a boost gauge, I have an AFR gauge, and I also have an oil pressure gauge. In a previous video, I actually pulled the dash out of this car, I cut it out, I installed those gauges, I got the power wired up to them all, and I finished up the boost gauge. So that's been functioning. The other gauges I waited on because I needed to get some more stuff and just kind of figure out exactly how I was gonna wire them up. I tried to wire up the AFR gauge, but I was having some issues. I think I might wait on that because at some point in the near future, I wanna get a different downpipe for this car and we'll figure it all out then with the O2 sensor situation. But what I wanna do today is finally wire up my oil pressure gauge. It's been like months <laughs> since I installed those and I still haven't gotten around to having the oil pressure gauge wired up. What I'm going to be using to do it is this little oil filter sandwich plate. This came from Glow Shift. I've had this laying around for about a month now. For those of you who don't know what this is, basically what this is gonna do is go in between the oil filter and the motor. That's basically what this little adapter is supposed to do. This is gonna screw on to the block where the oil filter would normally screw on and then the oil filter itself is actually gonna screw on there. This plate's gonna go in between them like so. And what that's gonna do is it's going to allow us to get an oil pressure reading. I thought about ways that I could potentially wire it up and install it where the stock oil pressure switch is located. Because obviously, once you have an oil pressure gauge, you don't really need that oil pressure light and that switch. But I felt like that would be more effort than it was worth. Might as well just keep the stock switch where it is, throw this plate on there. Then someday if I did want to install an oil temperature gauge for whatever reason, we would have the ability to do that. Basically this plate has, I think, four holes on it and it comes with these plugs as well so you can plug the holes that you don't need. So I'll be plugging up three of those and then I'll be putting the sending unit in, I, I'm not sure what hole yet. Speaking of the sending unit, let me see if I can find it here. A few moments later. Well, about 30 minutes later, I finally found it. Here's the sending unit and that's gonna screw in one of these threads. Since I'm gonna be draining the oil anyways, I just went ahead and bought a new oil filter and some oil, I'll just do a kind of an early oil change now. Anyway, just gonna double check the fit of this as well, make sure it's gonna screw in, and it looks like it is. And we're gonna do that first, I'm gonna warm the car up off camera, I'm gonna bring it in, put it up on ramps, drain the oil, standard oil change kind of stuff, and then we'll work on the sandwich plate. All right, well, I got the car warmed up a little bit and I've already drove it up on the ramps. Rather than use my little electric pump, I am going to try to loosen the oil pan drain bolt there. I tried to loosen it before and it didn't really want to come loose. I'm gonna to try to use a breaker bar this time. I'm just really curious to see what'll happen. Last time I tried to get it out, I didn't have a nice breaker bar like that, and um, that seemed to do the trick. So at least I know now the threads aren't completely shot. I know that is a thing um, with some of these Chryslers. The little adapter thing here that I'm gonna be using on the oil filter sandwich plate, I'm gonna torque it correctly. I'm gonna look up a torque spec. Not very many people talk about a torque spec, for those, but I'm gonna try to find one. And also something else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of red thread locker on it. That is something debated whether you should do or not, but I feel like probably for the better because for one thing, that's something you don't wanna to torque down too much. You don't wanna over tighten it. And another thing is when we're, you know, changing oil filters on a regular basis, it's less apt to loosen that up because, you know, last thing we want is for this to suddenly spring an oil leak. Maybe it would be best to run it something like that. It's a lot bigger than I had pictured it being. I just don't want anything to fly up and hit it if it's hanging down, but I don't think there's any better way to position it, honestly. Just double check that my filter is gonna fit. Well, that is a problem. All right, guys, well, as you just saw, having some issues with the oil filter conflicting with this plate. The oil filter on the turbo is already a really tight fit up in there. Plate brings it out just enough that there's no way you could get the filter to fit. 
I thought about maybe finding a different way to install the sending unit somewhere up in there, but you know what? I already have the plate. It's still gonna be the easiest way to go. I'm gonna research into maybe using a different oil filter on there. I don't know if that's a possibility. I've seen a couple people mention something about it on the internet. Kinda need to drive the car, so just got the oil in it, got it good to go, and um, yeah, I guess I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna figure this whole thing out. Day two. Let's try this again. So basically my final decision is I'm going to still be using the oil filter sandwich plate and my solution to the clearance issues is I'm going to be using a slightly shorter oil filter on it. This is a 3614 instead of a 3600. This is commonly used on the NAPT cruisers and this I think is going to give us the perfect clearance to fit everything in there. I was a little bit nervous at first about putting a different oil filter in there. My main concern wasn't, you know, like filtering capabilities, but the fact that it could kind of change the oil flow and the oil pressure and things like that, and I don't know if it would hurt the oil pump. From what I've heard, it I don't think it'll cause any issues. But of course, regardless, I would like to hear some opinions down below if you guys have something to say, whether you think it's perfectly fine or whether you think it's a very bad idea to uh, change up filters like that. Let me know. We could go a different route at some point. Anyways, I guess I'm going to uh, pull the car back into the shop and see what we can do. All right guys, well as you can see, I got the plate all installed. I got the filter on and everything seems to fit up perfectly. So hopefully we're good to go. I know I said earlier on that I wanted to like torque down the plate correctly and everything, you know, but I didn't have a wrench that would actually fit that little adapter. The closest I had was a one inch socket and it was just like almost big enough. It was just slightly too small. So I don't know what size wrench that is. It's obviously metric of some sort, but I ended up using a big crescent wrench and I just snugged it down pretty good. And I used the red thread locker. I'm sure it's fine. Still not sure where to run the wire. This is kind of an awkward spot for it to be. We'll figure something out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Day three. No, it should not take you three days to wire up an oil pressure gauge. <laughs> it's been Thanksgiving holiday week and you know, every day's been kind of busy. So it's kind of got spread out over three days, but today I'm at least gonna get this wired up so we can test it out. I'm not gonna, probably gonna end up having the wires all permanently wired up by the time we're done today, but kind of get an idea where I'm gonna run it up and we'll at least make sure that the gauge works and everything works and there's no oil leaks or anything. It's a cold rainy day, so coffee is definitely necessary. Well, you can't really see from up top, but the alternator is like down in there and the wire will basically come up kind of like where, where this ghetto wire is gonna run. This this uh, wire isn't gonna stay here and it's gonna go over it. Same way this one goes through my wonderful little grommet there, which is actually a rag. By the way, in case you haven't seen the video where I wired up the other gauges and got the power going and everything, my wires are primarily under this shroud. Everything runs in back of there and I have a ground back in there. And you can see everything running through here. I haven't even bothered to tie it up. The one wire is an RCA wire for my sub in the trunk. That tube there is for the boost gauge. And those two wires there, are one that goes for the power, which the fuse box is right here. I have a fuse adapter in there. The other wire is going out for the AFR. That, of course, like I just explained, doesn't really do anything. You guys can see in here, I have a fuse adapter. Seemed like the simplest and easiest way to wire that up into power. I ran the wire down from the gauge and then I capped it off and I labeled it. I thought I ran it into here, but unfortunately I did not. So <laughs> that means I have to pull this little dash piece out. Not hard to do. This pops out really quick. There's one little screw in there. Then this whole thing will pop out and then the wire should be back in there. All right guys, well I decided to skip past really quick since it was literally just me reaching up in here uh, trying to get this wire run. What I did so far is I got the wire hooked up here. I had a bunch of this wiring loom laying around that I bought from previous shenanigans. It's cheap stuff. Threw some around here. I got a zip tied here so that it's out of the way of anything moving or hot. You kind of see I got a zip tied there. I got to trim the zip tie off. Runs up in front of the air conditioning. I forgot what it's called, the, the can looking thing there. And as you can see, the wire comes up here. I got a zip tied to some stuff down there. Now I'm just gonna run it into the cab. I'm gonna throw some loom around these up here just to make them look a little better, keep them protected. Also, something I noticed when I was working down in here, and uh, I wonder if you guys could help me out, give me some advice, is this ground strap wire 
it was just dangling down in there. So you can see it was on something. It's hooked up to the side of the block. So I don't know what this goes to, but um, yeah, it's not hooked up. And I really, really like to figure out what that's to. So if anybody knows, be sure and leave me a comment down below so I can get this hooked back up. Yeah, so now I just gotta run this wire into the cab and then we can finally test this gauge out. Should be good to go. All right, guys, I got the wires all soldered together and taped up there, down in there, and I ran them, you know, back in here, got everything tucked away. So I just got to put the dash and everything back together, look everything over one last time, and I think then we can finally test this gauge out. It's kind of dark, but you can kind of see I ran the wire loom all along these two wires and across to kind of clean things up. It's looking good. A few moments later. All right, guys, here goes nothing. seeing a reading up there. Well, that's annoying. 2,000 years late. Well, um, at least I tried. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't get the gauge to work and I think it's just because like the gauge itself inside the car isn't wired correctly. I think, well, we'll talk about that in a future video. This whole gauge thing was my first real wiring project. I'd never done anything like that before. Bear with me on that. But primary thing though is we got that oil filter sandwich plate installed. I know some people were wondering about that and now you know. The only problem is I am a little bit concerned with like the way it's positioned up under the car. It's like I can just see something flying up out of the road and smacking that thing and breaking it off and then having oil spew everywhere and then I am screwed. You know, maybe it'll be perfectly fine, but I'd like to see what you guys have to say. I always appreciate you guys' advice. I know we always have a lot of fun talking back and forth down in the comments. So be sure, you know, and leave me one down below if you've ever installed one of these before, where you located everything and stuff. I'd really like to hear how you set it up. And if you use the oil filter sandwich plate, I mean, I don't feel like there's any other way that I could get that sending unit or whatever it's called to fit like up in there so it's out of the way. But, you know, I hate having it kind of hanging down a little bit like that. So let me know what you guys think. Should I just, you know, ditch the whole oil filter sandwich plate idea, take it off, go back to the way it was before and maybe figure something else out. Just, you know, give me some opinions. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say, so be sure to leave me a comment down below. Also, if you have any questions about what we did in this video, if you're trying to install a sandwich plate yourself or just whatever. I'm sorry this video is kind of short and a little bit on the boring side, but I got another video coming out in the next couple days. It's another ricer video. As you guys know, my um, my previous cringy ricer videos have done done pretty well in the views department. <laughs> but I got another one coming. We're just gonna mess around and have some fun in that one. Be sure and subscribe if you have not already because I come out with videos as much as I can, like two, three times a week. But anyways guys, thanks again for watching this quick little channel CGE video. You rock. God bless and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.